Bill Watson here on the web. Good to have all of you with us again. You know, in today's world, there's a lot of confusion surrounding marriage. What is marriage? What, how is it arranged? What, what does it really mean and what was it really purposed for? And all this confusion, I'm somewhat stunned that there is that much confusion around marriage because quite frankly, when I was young, there was no confusion about marriage. There was no question with regard to what marriage was. It was just simply a man and or a woman that would eventually get married and they would have a family, they would have children, and ultimately uh, have a house and build a family throughout uh, maybe 18, 20 years and put their kids in college, and that was pretty much the end of it. But in today's world, my friends, we have all of this kind of new thinking. We call it moral relativism. We call it postmodern thinking, where everything now is up under and for scrutiny. Everything is questioned. Moral relativism, if the law gets changed and if indeed there is a, a, a change of where things now are different from what they were, well, guess what? That now becomes the new norm. And postmodern thinking, well, anything and everything is up for question. And frankly, it is quite disturbing and it does get very confusing. Now you may say, well, what do you mean by that, Bill? Well, let me explain. Let me explain. Because consider this, consider the fact that today two men can get married. That's right. And if they choose to have a family, they can go down to an adoption agency. That's right, an adoption agency and get a baby and have a family, two men and two women can do basically the same thing. If they choose to get married, they can get married. And if they want a family, they can go down to an adoption service, uh, human services, and, and put in an application and for all intents and purposes, go ahead and have a family as well. And in addition, what we've got now is transgenderism. Oh, this has added a whole new dimension to the confusion of the dynamics between relationships that allegedly are sanctioned in a fashion that is rele uh, relegated to romance and uh, to even functioning with each other. I mean, boys now can become girls. Uh, you can go ahead if you're a boy and dress like a girl. Cross-dressing, it used to be called, but today they may even take it uh, further and actually begin to change their biology. They call it gender reassignment of all things. And women, girls, they can do this too because it applies to girls just as much as it does boys. If a girl wants to have her gender reassigned, she can actually biologically now change her sexual orientation with all of the accoutrements <laughs> that are associated with being a boy and actually change from a female to a male. And how about this? Because this is what it's led to. It's led to boys who think they're girls because they feel that way to go into bathrooms and or girl lockers, girl locker rooms and girl bathrooms is what I meant to say because they feel that they're a girl, even though biologically they're a boy. And so they can go into these bathrooms or into these locker rooms as a girl, but nevertheless, as I say, a biological boy. And this has led even to more confusion uh, with regards to boys now competing in girl sports. That's right, my friends. We've got now boys competing against girls in swimming, tennis, even wrestling and including weightlifting. You've probably seen some of the stories on your news carrying uh, the stories about how boys, biological boys who think they're girls, are competing against girls who are biologically girls, by the way, and of which, obviously, advantage to the boy. Without a doubt, advantage to the boy. Even as a matter of fact, Caitlyn Jenner, AKA Bruce Jenner, has opined over the fact that it's not fair. How can this be fair with boys competing against girls in girls sports? So here we are, all of these things that we're being faced with. Why so much confusion? Well, I'll tell you why there's so much confusion. We have lost our gyroscope. We no longer look at the absolute of what this good book says anymore.
That's right. People don't like absolutes. As a matter of fact, people would prefer, in our day and age, of course, the fact that, well, I want some wiggle room. I, I want some opportunity to redefine what used to be because, of course, we're in this postmodern thinking. We're in this time where there's moral relative relationships that we need to reassign and redefine what is right and what is wrong, what is basically normal and what is abnormal. And sadly, my friends, marriage has been affected by all of this confusion, questioning, different kind of approach of thinking and all the things that are associated with it. So where is this leading? Why, why the confusion? Well, I mentioned because we're away from and we've drifted from the good book. Let me illustrate something here real simple over here in Genesis to illustrate to you what I'm talking about. Because if we would get back to basics, perhaps we would have some clarity in all of this menagerie of varying concepts and ideas that come from this postmodern thinking and moral relative thinking. Notice this over here in Genesis chapter 1. And I want to read here real quickly here because believe it or not, these scriptures say things that oftentimes we read right over them. Genesis here in chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let me make man in our image after our likeness and he gave domination to mankind over all of the animals, fish, you know, beasts of the field, insects, all, everything. Earth was given to man. It, it is man's realm for him to kind of rule and dominate. Over here in verse 27, Genesis 1, we read this. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male, and notice this, and female. And notice why. Look at this. God blessed them, verse 28, and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And it goes on. So here we have, and what I'm talking about in terms of sometimes we just read over this, we see marriage, real simple. It's an absolute. It's a heterosexual relationship. It's a heterosexual arrangement. Why? So you can reproduce. That's why. So you can reproduce of all things. So the fact of two men getting together, the fact of two women getting together and marrying allegedly was not originally in the making. It wasn't in the arrangement. The arrangement was for the purpose of reproduction. The arrangement was in for the purpose of a man and a woman coming together to form a family. And that's what God is talking about. He mentions here to replenish the earth and to go ahead and essentially dominate it in your reproduction. So my friends, this is a detail, unfortunately, that oftentimes is overlooked and people minimize, they marginalize the spiritual aspect of marriage. That's right, because there is, believe it or not, there is a spiritual dimension to marriage that many people don't recognize. And that is the mystery that basically defines and gives marriage the real godly value. This good book is God's Word. And God's Word has a lot of value to it. And if we would understand that, and I, can't, I don't have enough time to go into a lot of detail, but if we would understand that God talks in this book in terms of a marriage covenant, that's right. You can make the case, my friends, from Genesis to Revelation, that this book is all about a marriage covenant. And marriage does indeed start in the Old Testament with God's relationship framed and characterized in a marriage covenant with His nation called Israel. And this framing, this concept, this idea of a covenant relationship with God and His nation is carried over into the New Testament. Let me show you something because in the New Testament it's carried over into defining the spiritual relationship of God and His church. Oh yeah, my friends. The value of marriage reflects, it is a physical reflection of the spiritual relationship that God has with His church. Notice this 
over here in Ephesians chapter 5 and in uh, verse 22. I'm going to summarize this uh, just real simple to give you the gist of what I'm talking about to illustrate how this is representative of God and His relationship uh, with, his, with His church. Here he says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands uh, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ, look at this, even as Christ, the relationship, as Christ is to the church. In uh, verse 24, he says, Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ. In verse 25, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. He goes on and he talks about the fact in verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church. And this is all in the context of a man in his relationship with his wife as God had his relationship with the wife of his church because the church is the wife. And in this regard, man and a woman in a physical institution of the matrimonial covenant is likened to the spiritual relationship of God and His church. And it goes right on down here, uh, and you think you're talking about marriage, but here's the coup d'etat. Uh, here is the, the rub of this whole thing. He says here uh, in verse 31, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, shall cleave and be joined unto his wife or his female, and they too, the two of them, shall become one flesh. Now this is a great mystery. What is so great mystery about that? A man and a woman getting married? Is that a mystery? No, 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 no. Look. This is a great mystery. Verse 32. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. That's what he's talking about. He was talking from verse 22 all the way down to here. He was talking about Christ and the church. But the analogy, the parallel, the metaphorical connection was all related to illustrating that you, in your marriage, in your relationship with your female, if you're a guy or if you're a lady with your male partner, is actually representative of, in the physical realm, of a spiritual matrimonial association and relationship of Christ and His church. And he closes it out here and he says, nevertheless, Nevertheless, he says almost as an afterthought, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife, see that she reverences her husband. This, this is a great mystery, my friends, that most people just overlook it. This is all about covenant. This is all about God defining what marriage is. And only God has the prerogative to define marriage. Yes, and it is certainly without question absolutely a man and a woman. Time's run out on me. I've got so much more to say about this, so what I'd like to do is suggest to all of you to go ahead and hit us on our website at cgi.org and go ahead and download the CD that we have titled The Sacred Meaning of Marriage. You can go ahead and get that uh, CD. It's about a one-hour presentation uh, that you'll listen to, but it's chock full of all kinds of uh, information that goes into far more detail than what I was able to go through here in this 15-minute presentation. But like I said, you can get it there uh, right on our website at cgi.org. Go across the top to media, uh, drop down, you hit uh, the sermons, and put in search, and you'll find the CD there, and again, the title, The Sacred Meaning of Marriage. Also, if you don't have access to a website or to a computer, you can go ahead and um, uh, email us. Well, I guess you can't email us, can you, <laughs> if you don't have access to a computer. But you could if you don't have uh, the ability to work your computer. You can go ahead and just email us at info at cgi.org. And don't forget about our app. We have a wonderful app, easy to maneuver through our, our website. Uh, it's co collated very easily for all of you to easily maneuver through it. Uh, it's free. It's downloadable right on any of your mobile devices. So go ahead and do that uh, first chance you get. So friends, this is Bill Watson again. Hope to see you once more here in the Armor of God on the web. <laughs> The Church of God International would like to introduce the availability of a new app designed for your convenience.
download it now.